Welcome to this video on how to use slings. Now, before we start using slings in people's homes, there's a few health and safety checks that you need to make sure that you're doing, as well as understanding the risk assessments. And we'll talk about that in another video. But for this video, let's just talk about the sling. Now, when we do the training, it comes from the HOP7 manual, which is the national manual for assisted moving and handling. This is updated every year. So whatever we're teaching you comes directly from this manual. So it's important uh, that you're aware of that. And equally, if you want to, you can always join up with the National Back Exchange. And the National Back Exchange is an organisation that will give you advice and guidance. So it's an app that you can download on your phone and they're there to help you as well. So let's just talk about the sling. So first of all, before we start going, we have to do the visual check of the sling. Now in each of the homes, we should find this laminated or somewhere to be handy for you, the carer, to see, or indeed the family member. So if the family member's assisting or doing the moves, they should follow this check as well. And this check is here as a reminder. So you may find these attached to the hoist, in the care plans, or on a wall but make sure you follow these checks before you start. And then let's think about the health and safety of the sling. So every six months, we need to do a visual check of the sling and you need to be completing this form and uploading it into your care note system. And that's to say that you've done a visual inspection of the sling and it is still safe to use. But that's not to say that you're not doing the same checks every single time you use the sling. Because again, from the last time to this time, the sling may have frayed. So again, make sure that you are doing these every six months. Now, if you notice a problem with the sling, it's down to the local authorities or the family member to replace them. Uh, again, in Sutton or in most local authorities, they'll have their equipment stores. So it's important you notify duty and then the equipment stores can contact the phone numbers that are on these sheets or email them to say that there's something wrong with these slings. So you do not use the sling if you think that it is dangerous. And then finally, we have the standard operating procedure known as the SOP. So the SOP is the standard operating procedure and it's a set of instructions written for each piece of moving and handling equipment. So it's really important as a member of staff that you have read this SOP because in the risk assessment, it will refer to this SOP and it will say uh, which sling to use, which loop to put it on, and it'll explain how to use the sling. So that's your paperwork for the sling. So let's go for the first thing. What does it say about doing a sling check? So the first thing is we want to make sure that nothing's frayed. So we're gonna check the stitching and making sure that the stitching is all good. We're gonna go round, we're just gonna check the stitching on all of the corners, making sure that nothing's frayed. And if it's frayed or damaged, we wouldn't use it. So we're gonna go round and we're just gonna do a visual check, making sure that nothing's frayed, so before we use. Good. Once we're happy with that, we're gonna make sure that there's no writing on the sling. So if somebody's got a marker pen and they've written the name on this sling, it actually um, makes the sling unusable because the chemicals in the ink can make the material break down and cause it to rip or tear. So if somebody has written somebody's name on that sling, you can't use it because it's not safe. So once you've gone round and you've checked everything, you're gonna make sure that it's, it's clean, it's not, it's not uneven, and you're just gonna give it a good visual check. And again, just giving everything a little tug. And as long as you're happy with that and it's all clean, then you're okay to use. Now it's important that you remember that there's different types of slings with different types of apertures. So this is the aperture here. And here you can see this one will go under. It creates the space here for the bottom. Uh, and again, this is a nice sling to move from bed to chair. But this one isn't in its in, in a, a sling that stays in the chair. So they're the black ones that are a bit more stretchy. So we've got slings that stay in the chair or indeed slings that just move from one place to another so you can take them in and out. So what you need to do is familiarise yourself with the SOP and at the back of the SOP, the standard operating procedure, you have 
pictures of different types of slings for different types of uh, activities. So again, we'll have toileting slings here where you have a much bigger aperture uh, using for bed to commode. So that's what we need to know about a sling. Perfect.